Hello, second graders. Our story of the week is a biography about Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela is a courageous man who made a lot of sacrifices in order to make a big difference in South Africa and around the world. Remember, a biography is a nonfiction book that talks about a person's life. During the read aloud, we will be using the stop and think strategy. This will help us understand the context of the story we are reading. I hope you enjoy this book as much as I did. Nelson Mandela, Words and Painting by Kadir Nelson. Koli Shasha played barefooted on the grassy hills of Kuhn. He fought boys with sticks and shot birds with slingshots. The smartest Madiba child of 13, he was the only one chosen for school. His new teacher would not say his Kosa name. She called him Nelson instead. Nelson was nine when his father joined the ancestors in the sky. To continue his schooling, Nelson was sent miles away to live with a powerful chief. Brace yourself, my boy. His mother held her tears and said goodbye. held counsel to warriors, medicine men, farmers, and laborers. The elder ones told stories of old Africa. For centuries, Tembu, Pondo, Kosa, and Zulu people lived in the mountains and valleys of South Africa. The land was bountiful, fertile, and rich. The people hunted, fished, and raised crops, living in relative peace. But they made war on European settlers who came in search of land and treasure. The settlers' weapons were stronger and breathed fire. Slowly, the people were conquered. Their land was taken and spirits dimmed. South Africa belonged to Europe. The elders grew quiet and Nelson felt sorry. Nelson grew into a young man and attended fine schools in the golden city of Johannesburg, where Africans were poor and powerless. Nelson became a lawyer and defended those who could not defend themselves. The government grew harsh and created a cruel policy it split people in three, African, Indian, European. It was called apartheid. The people were set apart. European only beaches, European only parks, European only theaters, and the people protest. Nelson organized rallies to fight apartheid. We must win back Africa, he told them. South Africa is for all South Africans. Amen la, he shouted. Away too, away too, they responded. Power to the people, and the people loved him. Speaking out was against the law and Nelson was arrested and jailed for a fortnight with a hundred men. They danced and sang, calling the ancestors to join the fight for freedom. Amen la! Amen la! Away too! Away too! 
The ancestors sent their daughter Winnie to stand next to Nelson. They found love and married and welcomed children into the world. Together, they stood and fought apartheid. The state vowed to put Nelson in jail and he went underground. He wore different disguises and lived in the shadows. Empty flats, farmhouses, and bedrooms of friends became Nelson's home. While he organized more rallies and protests, the people put out a warrant for his arrest, but they could not find him. Nelson slipped across the border to visit free nations where black Liberians, Ethiopians, and Moroccans freely converse with white Europeans and brown Egyptians. They shook hands, a glimpse of freedom from life at home. Nelson returned to South Africa to cleanse his homeland of hate and discrimination. With a vision for peace and harmony, Nelson felt renewed and ready to fight for freedom. But on a drive to town, he was captured, arrested, and taken to jail. The people cried, Free Mandela! Free Mandela! Wet paint and posters covered South African walls. On a small island off the coast of the southern tip of Africa, Nelson sat in a tiny cell. Every day, the world passed him by, cold mealies, thin blankets, hard labor. Nelson hammered rocks into dust and read, studied, and educated fellow prisoners. Days turned into weeks, months, and years. His children grew up, relatives passed away. South Africa began to fall apart. There were more protests, more rallies and violence. The people needed a leader. Nelson snuck a message to the people, I will return. As years passed, the world pressed South Africa to change. The new president agreed and European only signs came down. Beaches, parks and theaters opened. Nelson's comrades were set free. Apartheid was no more. Nelson was an old man. After 27 and a half years, the prison gates opened and Nelson was at last set free. Thousands surrounded him and Winnie hugged him. Nelson looked into the sky and smiled at the ancestors. Amen la! Thank you! The sun sparkled in his gray and white hair. Nelson stood proudly with the wind at his back and spoke to a colorful sea of people. We must forget our terrible past and build a better future for South Africa. Let us continue to fight for justice and walk the last mile of freedom. Millions were given the vote and elected Nelson Mandela, their new leader. South Africa was free at last and finally at peace. The ancestors, the people, the world celebrated. Men laugh. A word too. Oh, yeah.
yangu asene si magire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe wo yangu asene si magire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe wo yangu asene si magire mtuzeha sana nenda finira cheche mekwe